Hello, and welcome to another battle report from Santa Barbara Wargaming. I'm Paul, and today I'm playing a 50 point game uh, against D's Blind Water Congregation. I brought trolls today. Uh, in my troll list, I have Jarl, a bomber, an earthborn, a impaler, a full unit of long riders plus Horthal, a, the Sons of Brag, Janissa, the Rune Bearer, and the Felcaller, as well as the Swamp Gobber's Bellow Crew that are proxied by two whelps. You can see them in the middle there, uh, at little silver models there. So for my deployment, uh, I got to go first, and you can see the uh, we were playing the close quarters scenario with uh, kill box. You can see the two felt circles there in the middle. Uh, on the right there, we've got a big crater of shallow water and rough terrain. We've got some obstructions on the right there with a little forest, uh, some obstructions between the two um, objectives over on the left there. We've got two forests, an obstruction, and we've got a little linear obstacle in front of my deployment zone. So for deployment, uh, I like Horthal on the opposite flank of the um, long riders. I feel like the long riders often um, kind of have one task to do, and Horthal is independent enough that he can um, do well on the opposite flank. So having um, flanks uh, with the cav models, I think that's... It's definitely uh, a good way to run them. Bomber straight down the middle, I think, uh, gives them the most access to open ground. There's uh, a little bit of forests and some obstructions in front of them, but there's a nice open lane in which uh, you can then uh, kind of pepper the different... You can see the open lanes there between the forest and the obstruction, as well as the... Uh, the um, score, the control zone there. So I put the earthborn or the sorry, the bomber uh, there. Sons of Brag kind of next to them. Uh, they kind of make a good pair. You uh, throw two bombs and then charge in the Sons of Brag, and you can usually take out a heavy. Um, so I do like them uh, paired together. I've got the impaler sort of in the middle, uh, may mainly to babysit the bomber, which is quite nice. Then I Yarl doesn't need to be within six of the bomber as well as doesn't can spend his, his fury elsewhere. Uh, Janice is an overall um, good solo. She wasn't really that necessary in this matchup. I don't even, uh, if I were to take a, a two-list format, she wouldn't really be necessary. Jarl's can stay pretty far away with his 16-inch threat range, and the wall isn't all that necessary in this list, as well as you could say the list is kind of quick and can actually outrun Janice's uh, wall's uh, usefulness. Uh, the rune bearer is really good in this list. Jarl stays pretty far back um, and doesn't uh, move around too much within a game. Uh, and the rune bearer can help out with uh, magic bullet um, if you want to cast that twice a turn. Uh, Earthborn, uh, great overall uh, beat face. A uh, lot of good terrain for um, elemental communion. Uh, having a, a heavy war beast is almost a requirement. Uh, I like the long riders in this list. Uh, I felt like they, um, some games they can be really, uh, useful and other games they can kind of be very useless and, uh, they usually get one good charge and after that they kind of end up being a tar pit. Uh, you get some good stats on them on the charge, but after that they go down to pal 12 and, even with their armor 17, they're kind of outstretched and they end up kind of, they do a good job of jamming, but they usually only get one good charge off. Uh, they're not really meant to be like a multiple round unit or anything like that. Fell color is excellent in this list. Uh, I, I can save my upkeep fury and not have to put weld secrets on them uh, and rely on the three point fell color to provide them pathfinder, to get over that crater. So without the fell caller there, I think I would have had to play them a lot differently. Uh, I was able to uh, ignore the the whole bit about shallow water and rough terrain over there, uh, bringing the fell caller. He also comes into play uh, against Barnabas's feet. Uh, with Reveille, he can um, he has a ten inch bubble in which he can stand up models. So that's definitely useful in retaliating against uh, Barnabas's feet. Keeping that in mind. 
So I was playing D, and she's been giving Blindwater a try here, and I've uh, I've had another battle report with her online. You can check that out. But we're this this time we're playing fifty points. I think the last game that we played or that I did a battle report was twenty five or thirty five points. So this is a lot larger. Uh, for her list on the left, there we'll start from the left. You've got a Croak Hunter in advanced deployment, a Totem Hunter which prayed uh, Horthal. We have a uh, wrong eye with Snapjaw and a Bull Snapper on the flank. In the middle there, we on the starting on the left, we've got a full unit of uh, Gatorman Posse in green. Uh, we've got Barnabas. He has a Ironback Spitter and a uh, Rassler in his battle group. And then on the right there, there is a pink or a sorry, a purple group of a min unit of Gatorman Posse. Uh, I think that concludes her army list. So for my first turn, I like to use uh, get Jarl's uh, models up the table really fast. Um, I feel like the only really uh, outstretched threat she has is the Gatorman Posse, and she really spread them out. So if I can keep them from tar pitting and kind of uh, jam them up while targeting his beast. I feel like I could uh, do a good job of taking out Barnabas's army. Uh, on the left there on the flank, I wasn't too worried. Uh, I was a little interested in why the flanking force was all the way over there. Uh, none of those models, except I think the Croak Hunter, the, the battle group does not really have access to Pathfinder, so they would have to go around the forest. So I basically tried to refuse flank uh, that flank over there to hopefully not um, not have to worry about it too much. Um, beyond that, I ran up the um, the cavalry with quicken. It's always a definitely a good plus. I had um, fell caller, uh, fell call pathfinder onto them, so they wouldn't have to worry about the shallow water. I had Jarl, he just advanced up, um, cast Quick in, and put Tactical Supremacy on the Sons of Brag, giving them a little extra um, rain or extra movement on the first turn. Ran up the Bomber and the Earthborn, uh, advanced Janissa up and put a wall out there for the Earthborn. Uh, ran the Impaler up. Uh, I think I, ran, I also ran up the Bellows crew. And so everything pretty much ran. Horthal, you can see there on the left, he's just behind the left forest. I felt like um, I didn't want to get shot at by the Crow Hunter. Um, with a good dice roll, Horthal could uh, end up being de uh, be being dismounted, and I'd rather not like that. So he was there to kind of jam up or provide some uh, threat to the flank over there. That's why I put him out there. Okay, for D's first turn, uh, she definitely felt a little pressure uh, with my strong advance forward, kind of bunkered down, uh, put Iron Flesh on the Rassler, ca up ca or cast Warpath, put Iron Flesh on the Rassler, and then put a Swamp uh, out for Barnabas. Uh, definitely against the threat, uh, the shooting, I knew that I would have to contend with the, uh, the Swamp the whole uh, game, and it wasn't quite the deal breaker that I thought it would be, uh, but it could definitely, um, since I was so quick up the field, she didn't really have to rely on swamp pits to advance uh, her army up against a gun line. So being kind of a mobile gun line does help kind of put some pressure on with some quick advance forward and then still be able to get some of those range uh, threats out before the, uh, the initial alpha. So that's what she ended up doing. Uh, over on the left, uh, ran up the Croak Hunter as far away from Horthal as possible while still advancing. Totem Hunter uh, only wasn't able to run to within 10 inches of the prey, uh, possibly putting some threat out there. Or um, Snapjaw ran up. You can see he's kind of um, between the forest and the obstruction with uh, Wrong Eye and the Bull Snapper behind him. So Snapjaw hopefully can get into the battle. Uh, flank trying to catch up with themselves. The rest of the, the trying to catch up with the rest of the battle. 
So, uh, my first, or my turn two, you can see the, uh, the first thing that I really wanted to do. I uh, didn't upkeep Tactical Supremacy, and, but I upkept Quicken, and I put Far Strike on the Bomber from the uh, Impaler, had the Bomber advance, he got kind of a little screened by the, um, the Sons of Brag, but it ended up being just fine with range. I put two shots in the, the uh, Snapjaw, I actually deviated the second one, and it deviated direction one, distance four, and actually ended up landing on uh, Wrong Eye, but I didn't do any damage to him. So I, I did get the first bomb onto Snapjaw, we, uh, doing like eight points of damage. My dice were pretty good this game. Uh, I was able to get two of the Sons of Brag onto the bull snap or the Snapjaw, just enough to take them out with three attacks. I often uh, I didn't want to commit all three of them. Mainly there wasn't en enough room, but I also knew that there would be some easy retaliation, and I didn't want to give up three Sons of Brag, and it would have been overkill. So. Uh, it was a calculated risk not being able to take the bull snapper out, but the bull snapper may have only been able to take out two of the sons of Bragg, leaving at least one to retaliate. So it was definitely a calculated risk that I ended up on the the good side of. So for the um, middle, <clears throat> for the cavalry under Quicken with Felcaller's uh, Pathfinder, they were able to uh, get a good alpha off. I had two um, or three cavalry char or two cavalry charge and one slam. So I had the left one. He did uh, a charge against the bulls or the wrestler, uh, and uh, got impact attacks on both of them. I rolled a crit on the ironback spitter, but not against the wrestler, which I was really hoping for. Um, so I had two impact attacks with three dice with line breaker trying to get the critical. Uh, knocked down on the mount, but I was unable to do it against the wrestler. I then had the third one in the middle slam, so I knew that I could, um, I've been trying to take more advantage of bull rush, but what you end up doing is since the slam actually happens after all the attacks, so I can make all my charge attacks, and then hopefully get the slam off, but I didn't miss the slam. So that would have really helped kind of push the wrestler back, maybe even uh, slam him over some of those Gatorman posse uh, but I wasn't able to hit defense 15 with uh, my mat 7. So overall, uh, I did pretty well. I thought my dice my dice were quite good. I left the wrestler with, uh, almost I think it was like 8 to 10 boxes. So uh, doing some nice damage. Um, I mean, there they end up being mat 9 on the charge with the cavalry charge, and they end up being pow 14 on the charge with the uh, brutal charge that they have. So... Pretty nasty, but again, you know, it's kind of a, a one shot and they are quite expensive. They can, so hopefully the wrestler isn't able to take out all three of them with ease or even the Gatorman posse from behind. So, uh, beyond that, um, Jarl advanced up. I think he took a shot at the Ironback Spitter before the cavalry charge with Far Strike from himself. Uh, Put magic bullet up with the rune bearer's assistant, and uh, tried to put some damage onto the Gatorman posse before they become engaged. So dice metaphor is not too bad on an unboostable attack, especially if I can take out one of those Gatorman posse. So that's what he ended up doing. Uh, Impaler uh, assisted with the bomber, and then I had the um, I had Horthal actually advance away from the flank. I didn't feel like it was necessary to throw a Horthal away all the way over to the flank and get baited away, kind of kited. So I ended up um, moving him more centrally so that he can then kind of cover that lane if the Sons of Brag get attacked from the back. Horthal's right there to charge, uh, hopefully doing some uh, damage with that. So that was my turn too. Oh, and the Bellows crew popped a flag, or their cloud, uh, covering Jarl, uh, definitely don't want to get anything uh, to attack. Earthborn uh, advanced up with speed 7 with the rough terrain nearby, and Janissa advanced and put a wall up behind or in front of the Earthborn, hopefully protecting the Earthborn from getting uh, charged. 
So D's uh, beginning D's turn two, she used the min unit of the Gatorman Posse to take out one of the the um, the cavalry model, the uh, Tuffalos. She actually rolled very poorly, even with cold blood. I think she missed like one or two attacks. It was ones and twos uh, were pretty prevalent this turn. So with the uh, her battle group, she had the Rassler. Uh, activate his mind was out and so she was forced to boost both uh, initial attacks doing enough to kill the tuffalo and then snacking to get her mind back bought another attack against the other tuffalo uh, but was unable to uh, do an, a killing blow uh, had the gatorman posse uh, kind of line up uh, in front of uh, barnabas Kind of a strange move, even though Barnabas is, uh, has uh, options for Swamp, Pit, and really wanting to get those Gatorman Posse to support the um, the Swamp Horror. Uh, some good uses of Warpath got up the Swamp Horror uh, with Speed 4. Warpath really does help increase the threat range of the Swamp Horror. Uh, ended up getting the Ironback Spitter up a little further. Um, pretty much that's what ended up happening there with the battle group. Um, the Swamp Horror, <clears throat> excuse me, assisted by, uh, Warpath was able to get threat range <clears throat> onto, uh, the Sons of Bragg, but wasn't able to get reach, um, well being, uh, fully in the Swamp, uh, pit, which you can see is right there using the, uh, Privateer Press, the the upside the other side of a rec marker we ended up using it's about four inches so uh swamp horror um only really uh able to take out one of the sons of brag uh interesting choice uh to uh commit one of the commit the swamp horror to uh kill one warrior model um snap uh since snap draw was off the table uh wrong eye really only had the bull snapper Bull Snapper uh, charged in, uh, made an attack against the um, uh, the Sons of Bragg, but ended up rolling two threes in a row after the tough roll, uh, not being able to do damage. He was POW 12 and I was defense or armor 15, so even uh, down, I was still, I didn't really have to force another tough roll. On the left here, uh, since my Horthal had ran away, uh, he's left with his flanking force with the Croak Hunter and the Totem Hunter. He just kind of ran them forward. Uh, I would have really liked to see them kind of commit down that lane and even put some pressure on the bomber. Once you can kind of, if you can tie up the bomber for one turn, that's that's definitely an excellent uh, opportunity. I he There might have been a possibility for the Totem Hunter to advance and then jump. But I think she just ran it forward as well as the Crow Hunter. So at the beginning of my uh, turn three, I had uh, the Bomber activate and put two attacks onto the Swamp Horror because the Swamp Horror was uh, outside of the Swamp Pit. You have to be completely within it to uh, get that advantage. I put uh, damage on that and then I had Horthal charge in and kill the Swamp Horror. I had... Um, the Sons of Bragg activate, I advance them, I advance the one with the spray over to the Totem Hunter, uh, killing it, uh, with one-shotting it with the spray, and then I had Rathar with the Reach uh, stand up and make a his initial attack against the Bull Snapper, unable to uh, kill it with one shot. I had one of uh, my last remaining unengaged uh, cavalry model, he uh, did an impact attack against two of them and killed his charge target. You can see he was facing one of them, um, was able to do that. The other one uh, took an attack against the Rassler. I don't think he, I think he brought him down to four health. I then wanted to, I didn't want to commit the Earthborn to uh, both of the beasts. Uh, I didn't want to commit him completely to the Rassler or the Ironback Spitter, I really wanted to uh, have the Earthborn um, really pound on the Ironback Spitter. I had Jarl activate. He put two uh, shots. I think he 
aimed and got um, Far Strike from the Impaler because the bomber was too, close enough to the Swamp War that I need that. Uh, aimed and shot the Bull Snapper with Iron Flesh. I uh, was able to do the four points of damage to take out the Rassler. That, um, and then he popped his feet. Uh, I don't think it's in this picture, but it may be in the next one. Uh, popped his feet. And I put uh, the flags out or the the clouds out, uh, hopefully in a good place so that um, I will show you in the next uh, next slide where I placed them out. So I had the Earthborn commit to the Ironback Spitter, and it only took uh, two initial attacks and a bot attack to take out the Ironback Spitter. Uh, I was able to use the POW five weapon of my. Uh, cavalry model bringing me up to dice minus one and so I was able to uh, get a good attack off I think I just advanced up I didn't even charge so dice minus one with three attacks was able to take out the ironback spitter you can see some of my cloud placement with the little mesh there I uh, wanted to protect the uh, earthborn from being charged by the uh, Gatorman posse you can see a, a blue token Symbolizing the center of a another cloud. I rolled a one, so I got four clouds. Uh, another one, we used the uh, the Privateer Press Rec Marker. And on the bottom there, we used a white. Um, for the fourth one, it's a little white cutout uh, over there by the Impaler. So uh, overall, I wanted to protect Horthal from being charged. So I put a cloud in front of him. I didn't want the Earthborn being charged, so I put a cloud in front of him. I didn't want to have to worry too much about the crow cutter coming in and trying to ping my support staff, so I tried to make it difficult for that one. And then I didn't want any attacks on Jarl, so I put a flag in for, or a cloud in front of him. So that was um, pretty much my. This is, I think, the. Uh, what happened here? This might actually be the end of uh, her turn it must not have gotten switched over there we go so this is uh this is the end of uh d's turn three you can see uh kind of a duplicate here um i had she had the croak hunter come in and charge the sons of brag but she, with defense 13 he rolled a six and he needed a seven um we talked about this a little bit because I scored a point with Horthal in the control zone and Jarl in the other control zone. So it kind of left her in a pickle. She was out, she was down with no beast left and a few Gatorman posse. And so we talked about it and the kind of the best move was committing the Gatorman into the zone while uh, Barnabas is in a swamp pit and popping your feet, trying to knock everything down. Uh, that was kind of the only play that we could think of. It was definitely running out of options. There's not really a assassination on the board or anything like that. Barnabas isn't, at least I don't know of any tricks for Barnabas to pull out uh, a solo assassination run with the Gatorman. Um, definitely uh, getting out threaded. So um, he popped his feet and... Uh, Pretty much did that. The You can see kind of the gator men over on the right there kind of out on their own. Just kind of ended up uh, baiting and kind of kiting that. Uh, I ended up kiting that gator man posse over there on the right. Uh, beyond that, she popped her feet. She advanced up uh, Barnabas uh, in the swamp pit and some gator man posse in the front there. You can see uh, here's a better picture of them. Really well painted army. I think they're pretty awesome. Uh, all they need is some better rules. Uh, and you can see the crow country over here on the right, or the left. Okay, so um, I knew that I could go for an assassination run. I wanted to, uh, I knew I couldn't attack Barnabas directly, but with magic bullet and some blast damage, I think I could be able to do it. So I needed to keep uh, one of the Gatorman posse alive to target them with the bomber. So I had Jarl activate. He was able to kill one... Gatorman posse and then put some two damage on another one so there was three and I put uh I killed the right one the far right one and I attacked the far left one because I knew the center one was close enough for some blast damage so I was able to do I think I rolled like uh 
10 damage on with magic bullet because she had nothing to transfer to. So dice minus five, I was able to do 10 damage over uh, two magic bullet shots. Uh, I then activated the bomber. The bomber um, bought the first attack, or I think I boosted the first attack and I missed and I deviated and I didn't do enough damage to kill the Gatorman posse in the front there. I then bought and boosted the hit and I hit the Gatorman posse in the front and then I boosted damage against um, Barnabas. I rolled a 661 uh, dice minus, uh, he was 17, I'm 8, it was dice minus 9, I think I just, just enough damage to kill him, so, uh, definitely a, uh, close match, uh, I thought I did, uh, pretty well, uh, taking advantage of my quick speed, um, and kind of overwhelming, uh, the, the flanks were a little, I, I felt like she overextended herself a little bit, and I took advantage of that, the far left flank could have been uh, kept in to the inside of the left forest and um, maybe not committing. The Gatorman kind of were her only, um, abil her only ability to take out um, kind of stray units that were wrapping around the flank. So it was definitely a, a tough match. I think I, uh, I did a good job uh, handling threat ranges and... Uh, my dice were just really good this game as well. She had some really poor dice rolls, even so much that I offered to lend her my dice, hopefully to uh, even out the uh, the odds. But overall, I thought it was a fun game, and I really um, appreciate playing uh, Blind Water at a larger level, a uh, larger um, game size. I think they excel, uh, especially when you can bring uh, two Gatorman Posse. Uh, and some of the other flanking forces like uh, Wrong Eye and Snapjaw can be pretty devastating. So overall, thanks for the uh, thanks for the watching, uh, the view. I always uh, appreciate um, when people actually uh, watch my uh, battle reports. I love doing them, and I really appreciate all the comments that people uh, uh, leave on YouTube. And let's see. Oh, here's some more. I have some. Uh, leftover photos here you can see over on the uh the left side i had the opportunity i felt like if i wasn't going to kill barnabas uh with the blast damage i thought about uh, activating the cav model and standing him up killing the um gatorman posse on the you know hopefully and then i could i could either charge in or trample i would end up charging in the um the earthborn Hopefully with the uh, the rough terrain, I don't think I was actually close enough to get any of the rough terrain bonuses. I might have been actually out of range uh, to actually charge in and uh, attack Barnabas. And over on the left side, it was uh, pretty. It was pretty tough. You know, the um, wrong eye and wrong eye was definitely a little out of place. wasn't able to spend a few turns, kind of uh, getting back into the fight. The flanking models are. They're tough. They're they're kind of cheap, but I think they, if if you kind of use them as a one shot missile and you know pick a target and go after it, I think it's uh, they can definitely be pretty useful. But anyways, thanks for watching, and um, if you're interested, I uh, this this battle report is created by a iOS app called Battle Report, which you may see in some of the comments. Um, it's, uh, it's an app that I created to help people make battle reports. I really like making them and I thought, uh, an app would really assist in that. So if you're interested, check that out on the app store. It's called battle report. Thanks.